Hey, good morning everybody. Um, I don't. I was going to say just a quick video, but it might not be quick, quick, but I'll do my best. So what I was doing, I've been sorting out, um, I've got more teaching coming up, and that requires me to kind of sort my life out basically, because I've got samples everywhere, I've got sewing everywhere, nothing's organised, it's in the house, it's in my workshop, it's upstairs, it's... So I've been doing a little bit of that this morning and I came across this work you can see on the table um, which is from a class, I don't know how long ago, maybe if you did that class you can tell me. Um, but basically, just a minute I've thread my needle, is there. Basically the samples that need some kind of home, um, they have been kept safely, I do look after things, I do make sure everything's you know safe and as it should be. Um, so these are from one project, um, ready to be, well they're not ready, they need to be, I'll show you in a minute what I'm going to do with some of them. Um, so th those are all part of a collection and these are a similar thing, but I'm thinking they can all be mounted together in some kind of book. Uh, and what I was thinking was they need support, especially the bigger ones. So I need to put together some kind of book folder, something or other to keep them safe. So what I've decided, and I'm not doing that today, but what I've decided is similar to this one. I'm going to make something similar to this because it's quite weighty and it would give support to these samples. And this is basically Brodery Anglais fabric, white fabrics, embellished and embroidered. And then instead, you've seen this before because I've had, there's a video about this somewhere. Um, and then the spine, samples can be pinned to the spine. So what I'll do is I'll make one big enough to hold those big samples, but I'll mount them on headers. So I won't have folds on the spine like I've got here. Um, I'll have folds coming down the way, but they'll have to be quite big. So I need to think about putting that together, um, the cover or the holder for those samples. And it does need to be quite weighty to support them because they're quite big. So uh, looking at them, mm, I don't want them to be getting creased. So yeah, let me just have a quick look. So that would be inserted into a header and stitched or pinned on. So I'm thinking the cover, if it was if it was a front cover that was embellished and then a lining that was embellished and then it had strips of fabric or binding across it to hold these samples that would be quite weighty, but it's gonna need to be, you know, quite a good size to hold these. So this one, these are silk, and silk frays like Billy O. I don't know if it's the warp or the weft, but one way frays like Billy O. This one is ready hemmed, folded, ready to be hemmed and stitched. This one is ready to be hemmed and stitched. This one could probably go in like that without any further work. Um, they're already done. So I've got one that needs some attention and there isn't enough spare fabric on it, this one, to hem it really. It's hemmed down one side. It's well basted, it's not stitched properly. But then this side, this is a fraying a bit. So I don't know if it's probably not big enough wide enough to turn over to fold over for hemming so what i've done is i've got two pieces of ribbon here and i measured it well i didn't measure it but i laid it against it for the length of it okay and i'm going to make this ribbon into kind of a binding so i've got two pieces of ribbon with the pin together at the minute and what i'm going to do i'm going to base them together to hold them in place so that they're exactly matching that the edges of them meet properly But I'm really going to think about the cover for this. Um, it'll be a new project for me. So just big basting stitches down here. Making sure my edges are together. I'm 
Now you can do this on your machine, I don't know about you, but I've got a basting facility on my sewing machine. Basically it's just very, very long straight stitch and then it unpicks easily. Um, shouldn't take me too long to do this. Actually, it's taking longer than I thought it would. But the main thing is, my edges are together. Okay. Oops. Bin men just arrived. Saturday, it's a garden bin day. I'm sure you wanted to know that. Right, nearly there, nearly there. And then I'm going to change the position of the camera because I'm not really in a very good place for me. So, sorry about this. I didn't think it would take me this long. There you go underestimate. So what I'm basically trying to do here is create a kind of binding uh, in an easy way, oh, itchy nose, um, just to make my life easier when I come to put it on the side of this fabric. Right, so that's that done. stitch it a few more times. Right there, I can cut that off. Put it over there. So what I want to do now, if I move these, a life in embroidery. Holy, honestly, I have so many, many, many samples and pieces of work. So what I want to do now, if I turn that that way, now I've checked this with my set square and it's straight kind of straight, mostly straight. Right, so if I do that, am I going to work in here? Pull it out a bit more there. So now what I'm going to do, and hopefully now I've lost that ribbon. Where's that ribbon gone? I think I picked it up with all samples, didn't I? No, 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 no. Where's it gone? Oh, it's there. Honestly. Right, so now what I'm going to do, and this will make it easier when I'm stitching it on, is I'm going to slip this over the edge of this fabric so the basted bit is going to be furthest away from the silk, right? So I'm going to just hopefully open this up and slip it on like that, okay? Yeah, and then I'm going to pin it. Maybe it'd be better if I. It's quite slippy. I never said it wouldn't be fiddly. And lay that edge in there yeah you see what's going on here and then pin this on and pin it on Slip it in. I never said it wouldn't be fiddly you've got to check is that you've caught it all in. I suppose I could have pressed it open but then I might have a problem with that being obvious once I had it all pinned on, you know what I mean? Um, Patience is a virtue. 
my grandmother used to say that, my great-grandmother. Patience is a virtue, young lady. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, come on. I was saying in one of my videos for class, but really, I mean, today doing this, I'm conscious that you're going to fall asleep while I'm doing it. <clears throat> but generally speaking, as a rule, with my embroidery, I don't care how long things take. They take as long as they take. I'm never in a hurry. I'm never wishing something was finished. Um, I enjoy every single thing, even these fiddly awkward things. So there's nothing for me a chore at all in, in terms of embroidery, uh, hand stitch, nothing. I can't think of a single thing. A new way, I probably will think of something in a minute. But off the top of my head, well, no, it's no, it's about the ritual. It's about the patience, and it's about the the love of the fabric and the cloth, and wanting to give it your best. You know. Um, and that really is true. I'm not into quick fixes. Nearly there. Nearly there. Come on, don't let me down. Come on. So then what's going to happen? Please. Nearly there. I will tell you in a minute what's going to happen. Because this to me is the easiest way of doing this right. And trust me, because I've done it. I've done it so often. And I'll show you in a minute where I've done it previously. Um, come on. Oi, oi. <laughs> come on. Come on. Then they'll be trimmed when they're finished. It'll be trimmed when it's finished. So then what happens <coughs> is I run in stitch down here, down here, okay, where the pins are. Well, I baste it first, then I run in stitch. I'm not going to do that on camera because you'd be here all day. And then I take that basting out there that I put in initially. And then what happens is this, okay, like this one's done. It's open at the edge, but because I've done it like this and I'm not trying to do the running stitch, the decorative bit, holding both pieces together, making sure I'm catching front and back and everything's fitting in there and not slipping about. That's why I stitch it first and almost make it into a binding and then put it on and pin it and then baste it then run in stitch it, then take these out, okay, and then they become open like that. I mean, I could, I guess, run in stitch there and run in stitch it sealed, um, but I don't know, I just like that. It's just a, it's a personal thing. You might want to run in stitch both sides. It's entirely up to you. So that's that side ready now, ready for basting them down there and the run in stitch. Um, so that's maybe just a little tip for you, if you haven't got any bias buying, I mean, it just wouldn't work going around a curve, but for an edge, um, lower, upper, side, whatever, that's a, a really useful thing to do, and it neatens it. So I'm going to turn off now, and I'm going to think really hard about this wrap thing I'm going to make for these samples, because to be honest with you, they don't get the attention they deserve when they're all just stacked neatly and wrapped uh, they're wrapped with muslin, so they've got a muslin cover under, underneath them and above them. There's so many more than these. I, I could probably mount samples for the next month and still not get through them all. So I like to take the opportunity to do them bit by bit. So we'll do these like in the next couple of weeks and then maybe leave it a few months and do a couple more. I will get there eventually. Um, and it's nice to revisit anyway. It's nice to revisit things you've done in the past. So there, I hope you all have a lovely weekend. It's a bank holiday here. Uh, probably not everywhere, but it is here. The sun's shining, but don't let that fool you because it's going to rain after. Okay.